Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. Today's topic is The Flashman Papers by George MacDonald Fraser. These books are not steampunk. However, they are historical novels which I think have the historical aspects, particularly of the Victorian era, that many steampunks will enjoy. They star Harry Flashman. He's a fictional British soldier who gets into all sorts of scrapes and he somehow survives when other people perish. He is present at all these great historical events of that time, including the Siege of Jalalabad, which was in Afghanistan, the Charge of the Light Brigade in the Crimea, the U.S. Civil War, the Battle of the Little Bighorn, and many more. It's a dark comedy uh, for people like me who have a rather twisted sense of humor. The premise is that Flashman is a bully and a coward who blunders into situations where he ends up being mistakenly hailed as a hero. It's the kind of series that, depending upon your tastes and sensitivity, you will either love it or you'll hate it. Now, I hadn't intended to do a review of Flashman because it's not steampunk and it's not sci-fi, but as this channel has gone on, I've kind of broadened my horizons a bit. And a few weeks ago, I read an article by one of my favorite bloggers, and he was listing whom he thought were the best comedic writers of all time. And his number one was P.G. Wodehouse. And Wodehouse is a guy, a British writer, who I enjoy too. He was the guy who wrote the Jeeves series. Jeeves was this very, um, very competent butler who had this very uh, flighty young man, Bertie Wooster, who he was in charge of. And he was always getting Bertie out of trouble. So anyway, it's pretty funny, but it's kind of dry humor, and I didn't ever find it hilarious. So I was thinking, who would I consider to be the funniest? And I came up with one only, George MacDonald Fraser and the Flashman series. I find that hilarious. It's a lot more bawdy, for example, than anything by Wodehouse. I first heard of Flashman in a review on a political blog a few years ago by a guy who would write about various novels and movies at times. And it was very popular in its day. I think especially in Britain because Fraser was Scottish and a lot of the historical things happened in England. And at the time I was more fo focused on sci-fi so I'd actually never heard of it uh, before then. This was in my early days of listening to audiobooks, that is when I saw the review of Flashman. So I got a copy of the first book and it was narrated by David Case. And who was a great narrator, by the way. And I found the book to be hilarious. I didn't read the others immediately, but I did come across a movie of the second book called Royal Flash, uh, from 1975, starring Malcolm McDowell as Flashman, and uh, enjoyed that, so I got the book as well. It's Later, when I saw this bit about Woodhouse, I decided to go back and get some more Flashman novels. And by now, I've done six of them, which is half of the total number of Flashman novels written. Now, the Flashman series is not for everyone. In these sensitive days, it would need a trigger warning on every single page. It is told as if it's a memoir, a brutally honest memoir, by the 90-year-old Flashman. He's recounting his long life and his long, notorious life of lying, boozing, womanizing, and fleeing from danger. I found it so entertaining that, again, I just laugh out loud when I'm reading it, or when I'm listening to it, rather. Flashman originated as a minor character in someone else's story. It was a children's book called Tom Brown's School Days by Thomas Hughes. Harry Flashman was a bully who picked on young Tom and his classmates when they had just entered uh, the rugby boarding school. And it was, about, I think, about the same age when they enter Hogwarts, <laughs> for reference. Uh, Tom, being the hero, ends up standing up to Flashman, so he earns a little bit of a, a breathing room, you know, because bullies don't like to be stood up to. And, but in any case, Flashman eventually ends up getting expelled for coming back to the school roaring drunk. And, and that kind of ends the Flashman problem for the young boys. As part of my Flashman kick, I got a copy of Tom Brown's School Days from Gutenberg, because it's in the public domain, and I read it. And it wasn't as corny as I expected. I actually kind of enjoyed it. I really appreciated the, the glimpse into a long-gone era and Flashman was a surprisingly minor character. I mean, he was just your stereotype bully, basically. 
And it's funny that uh, Fraser got this idea to use this odd character as the focus of a book, and I guess because it was successful, he kept writing them. The first Flashman book starts with his expulsion from rugby school, and he's in trouble with his father, who so has to do something, so he joins the army, joins the British army. And with his father's influence, he gets himself a cushy post with the cavalry, because he loves horses, and he thinks he can do mainly ceremonial duties around the home country, and keep himself safe. <laughs> But unwittingly, he gets sent to India, <laughs> where there's actual danger going on. And there, he's like showing off to superiors because he's, he's very narcissistic. And so, because he's showing off his horse riding skills, he gets a post with the Lancers. And then he gets sent to Afghanistan. And anybody who knows anything about history knows how badly that went for the Brits. Uh, Harry is involved in uh, the Afghan... Uh, betrayal of British occupiers, <laughs> the rebels slaughtering them all, and he even is in the siege of Jalalabad where he survives and gets hailed as a hero, even though he was cowering in a corner while other people were risking their skins for him. So after this and the other books, he manages to blunder into numerous historical incidents, and, and he meets numerous famous personages, such as Disraeli, Lincoln, Bismarck, Custer, and Geronimo. Often his troubles result from his impulsive behavior. Like he has a quarrels with fellow aristocrats and beats one up. Or he sleeps with another man's wife. <laughs> and because of this, he has to uh, get out of the country until things cool down. As he's been everywhere and done everything and met everyone, I kind of call him a narcissistic, nasty version of Forrest Gump. The funny thing is that, again, he's He's always being hailed as a hero, and so he's always trading on that currency. And people, people will now assume that whatever he's doing, he's doing it because of some mysterious reason, not because he's a venal coward. The books I've read in the series, first one, Flashman. The second book is Royal Flash, in which he meets Otto von Bismarck, and he has to impersonate a German prince. And for various complicated reasons. It's a rehash of Prisoner of Zanda, and it's a little different than the rest of the Pashman books. There's not as much historical uh, background, though there is some. The third was Flash for Freedom, which involves a slave trade. This one is really going to get the uh, sensitivity readers' heads to explode. Flashman at the Charge, which involved the Chartered Light Brigade, which of course Harry survives <laughs> by trying to flee from the battle. He gets himself captured by the Russians as a prisoner of war, and gets into even more interesting situations. Uh, the next couple were not made into audiobooks, so I skipped ahead, uh, and way ahead to Flashman and the Mountain of Light, which also takes place in India, in which case he sleeps with a beautiful Maharini, and he in, ends up capturing the koh -Nor diamond for Queen Victoria. All kind of by accident. Finally, I did an earlier audiobook, which happens to be my favorite so far, Flashman and the Redskins, which was published in 1982, and which, of course, involves Native Americans. And this one takes place in the Old West, which I know a lot more about, so the humor is a lot funnier to me. It involves people like Kit Carson, Wild Bill Hickok, and so on, George Armstrong Custer, a Crazy Horse, and so on. So that one I really loved. Anyway, Flashman is the classic antihero. Though he can be charming and personable, he's a sociopath who admits he has no conscience. And although a lot of anti-heroes are basically good men with serious flaws, Flashman is not a good man. His principal strengths are a knack for learning languages, which serves him well in all his foreign explorations. He, he, he speaks other languages like Pashtun and Apache, for example. Uh, he also is a great horseman. He loves horses. And finally, he's able to charm the pants off of dang near any woman, although he does occasionally strike out, as with Florence, Florence Nightingale. <laughs> Though cowardice is Flashman's most notorious vice, and sometimes despicably so, he is by far the worst off when he's treating women, the way he treats women. And love him and leave him is definitely his motto, although that's not the worst of it. That really isn't. Sometimes, if he has to, if it involves saving his skin, he will do terrible things to get out of the way. Now, as the bully in Tom Down's school days, he's intentionally cruel to the younger boys, 
Not so much in the book, especially not with women. In fact, he hates the idea of cruelty to women. He just does it when he needs to. <laughs> and, uh, uh, for example, he is married through most of the books, even though he's sleeping with all these other women, because he, as a young man, he was quartered as a cavalry soldier. He was quartered with a aristocratic family, a rich man who had these pretty daughters, and he gets caught with one of them, Elspeth, a lovely young blonde, is forced to marry her, and through all these years they stay married. He's cheating off in other countries. She is possibly cheating on him because she's a terribly, terrible flirt and she loves aristocratic men. He, she's always off riding with them or whatever. And uh, so he even suspects his, that their first son is not his. But nonetheless, it somehow works for them as it probably only can in a novel. Uh, now, again, as I said, some of his worst offenses are against women, and I'm going to give a few spoilers here, so for the next three or four minutes, you may want to skip ahead if you haven't read these. First of all, he's given a slave girl by his Afghan captors, who are brutal and evil men, basically. He's supposed to enjoy her. She doesn't want to, but he figures if he, if he disappoints them, they might kill him, so of course he has to force her and he nearly gets killed by her in the process because she's pretty fierce. <laughs> Serves him right, of course. Another case, he is fleeing from Cossack soldiers in Russia in a sled. They're gaining on the sled, which is weighted down. They've got too many people in it. Uh, and besides him and the driver, there's this woman that they're trying to, to rescue. <laughs> he throws her out of the sled so that they can get away. <laughs> oh, and she's sleeping at the time. The occasion is when he's basically infatuated with this young, beautiful, high-end prostitute in Santa Fe, New Mexico. She's a mixed-race girl, Haitian Creole, and he's going to run away with her to Mexico. And as they're leaving the brothel, they get confronted by these, uh, by the Spanish priest in these Navajo tufts who demand to buy her for the Navajo chief. Well, he agrees. <laughs> he, he's too cowardly to turn it down. And uh, it gets him into trouble later. And so, again, it's hard to sympathize with him when he treats women so badly. Uh, and it's funny because as many women as he sleeps with, there's no mention of pregnancy except for his son, whom he suspects is not his. <laughs> <laughs> and so I suspected that maybe Flashman was sterile, but later on in one of the later books, he meets a, a young man who is the son of a woman who was his former lover, who is very much like him, who has the same sociopathic attitudes, <laughs> and uh, uh, he just, oh my God, this is my son, <laughs> probably my real son, and like my son back in England who's like become a bishop <laughs> because this one's a bit of a scoundrel and so uh, the, 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 the illegitimate son says father if your amorous adventures are what I hear they are I imagine you've left behind as many bastards as King Solomon <laughs> and so the funny thing though is that Harry does love his wife Elspeth and She's like the only person he ever risks his, his precious skin to save. Like when she's captured by pirates. Or when she, he fears she's going to be captured by the Lakota warriors when they're on the warpath. And so she's the only one that he will sacrifice for. And yet there's a hilarious scene where he catches her with another man in her bedroom. <laughs> the Earl of Cardigan, his former commanding officer, is standing there with his trousers around his ankles... Uh, well, Elizabeth is naked, standing by the bed, and uh, the Earl looks at them both, pulls up his pants, says, "Oh, well, I'll be going. I'll be going then. Good evening to you both." <laughs> Which is, I found so hilarious. And Elizabeth says, "No, I didn't know he was here. He snuck in on me." And so he forgives her, even though he thinks she's so dumb. He refers to her as his beautiful idiot. He does love her, and he and they have great makeup sex after that. So what I love about these books. Besides all this offensive stuff, is that Flashy has this great sardonic humor, and he's always got this wry commentary on the world. 
he has great insults <laughs> the way he goes after people. Like there's this professor who's talking about the evils of the white man against the Indian, and he says, "You've never been tortured by the Apaches, <laughs> you, you, you stupid pipsqueak." <laughs> yeah. and he uses he has a lot better insults than that. I like the hilarious scrapes that Flash gets himself into, which he normally deserves. There is great dialogue that's appropriate to the historical times. Like, when he meets Lincoln, it really sounds like Lincoln. It sounds like some of the things, Lincoln's like wry sense of humor. That's what it sounds like. And, and Fraser came up with this stuff. So he must have known a bit, must have read a fair bit of works by that president. I love the fun Britishisms, including many euphemisms for sex, such as rogering a woman <laughs> and uh, a gallop. <laughs> and his favorite curse, which is now my favorite curse, which is, damn your eyes! And, of course, there, there is this great and detailed historical background, so you know Fraser must have been very, very good at that. There are these weird coincidences in which characters from before come back to menace Flashy, people he's betrayed often come back to get at him, which he deserves. And, of course, the late David Case, the narrator, it does fantastic accents, especially of Americans, which is hilarious. I love it when Brits do an American accent. And a little bit of a strange way of using a foreign accent when the character is supposed to be speaking German, for example, or Pashtun. He'll adopt an accent even when it's flashy, which is kind of funny. But, you know, you can get past that. Finally, I want to note that there's these great philosophical sayings of Flashman. You know, a few years ago we had a book called The Tao of Pooh, when Benjamin Hoff collected sayings by Pooh Bear, <laughs> by A.A. A. Milne, in a book making it a philosophical thing. And in this case, I would call it the Tao of Flashman. And uh, here, I'm going to quote a few of them, because this is a review, and so I can. Fair use, right? He also serves who only turns and runs away. When the game's going against you, stay calm and cheat. Now, that should be on a poster. A good gallop needs no philosophical excuse. Finally, life ain't a bed of roses, and you must just pluck the thorns out of your rump and get on. Now, as far as the cons biggest one is Flashman himself being an awful person, and so it's hard to sympathize with him. But the only other one is that there are so many foreign terms in some of these books, especially the Indian ones, that he's always explaining, you know, what, what is this, what is that, you know, what, you know, words for a turban and, and, and you know, a conveyance of some sort, and, and the, their dress and their uh, various positions in their autocracy and so on. So that is a little annoying, but very minor. Essentially, I would uh, rate this series so far four and a half gears, and the only reason I'm deducting one half of a gear is just because Flashman is such a horrible, awful person you can hardly sympathize with. I must note that besides Flashman and the other novels, uh, several, Fraser was a successful screenwriter for many movies, including The Three Musketeers, The Prince and the Pauper, Octopussy, Red Sonja, and his own Royal Flash. He was also a fierce critic of political correctness. Imagine that! He died in 2010, so he was spared the worst of these appalling things, like publishers rewriting Wodehouse and Christie and Roald Dahl to remove all the offensive languages. As a bibliophile, I find that horrific, just like cinephiles hate colorizing. I would make it a flogging offense, if, if not worse, <laughs> if I were in charge. Absolutely. So, because of the PC climate today, it's unlikely that Fraser's other books will ever be made into movies, sadly, but at least I don't think his books will be revised because there's no way a sensitivity reader's head would explode reading, for example, Flash for Freedom. The N-word is mentioned like a thousand times <laughs> because that's the way people talk those days. And there's no way if you tried to remove everything that was offensive, you'd end up with two pages left. <laughs> Which is why I love it. I mean, for, for me, whatever, offensive stuff is funny. I guess that's just my philosophy of life. you got to take the good with the bad, and the best way to deal with the bad is not to be angry and upset and depressed, but to laugh at it, because that's what life is, right? This has been my review of The Flashman Papers, at least six out of the twelve novels. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. It helps us get out the good steampunk gospel. And 
talk about our other reviews, such as sci-fi, fantasy, and historical fiction. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Thank you.